Welcome to Tea Time. It is evening tea time, and I can't believe we're already at the last tea time of this week. We had such an incredible morning and afternoon. We were joined with Janet Har Harvey this morning uh, this morning with human development, and then we went into children's mental health this afternoon with Nan Artwright. Now we have the incredible Stephanie Levine. I think I'm saying it right. I hope I am. If not, she's going to tell me when she gets out here. So let's get the disclaimer out there, her bio, and let's get Stephanie in here and let's spill some tea on mystery. We're not going to do too much romance. We're going to do more crime, mystery, all of that good stuff. We're going to just slide some tea books into you and get you to grab some books for Christmas because Christmas is just around the corner. So disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time live show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that this show is engaging in discussions forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me at my Miss Liz through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect your wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all tea times in 2023 are done on Thursday, 10, 3, and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If it's not a Thursday, it's a rescheduled tea time or it's a surprise guest that wants to come back and have a second cup of tea with Miss Liz. That's just the way we work in this house. Now, a little bit on my guest. She's a best-selling author. She's a writer. She's a novelist. And she's a mom. That's right. We got moms on this show. So Stephanie Levine comes from a long line of mystery lovers. In an effort to keep them in her good grace, her books combine intrigue, quirkiness, and adventure with a healthy close of dose of humor and wit. She has published over 50 popular, often, best-selling novels under her name, as well as pen names in both romance and mystery. From hopping trains across the U.S. to crew, crewing a sailboat on a trans transatlantic crossing, from musing dogs on a Canadian dog sled to unwittingly hiking Mount Washington, she's been lucky enough to have incredible adventures alongside all kinds of real-life characters. 
One of her missions is to introduce readers to the kind of colorful personalities that have shaped her life. She currently lives in her favorite South Florida neighborhood surrounded by palm trees, peacocks, a few wild kids, one wild husband, and a handful of incredible family members and friends. She's a member of the Mystery Writers of America and Novelist Industry. Now let me get Stephanie in here and let's spill some tea. Welcome, Stephanie. Hi. It is an honor to have you. I've been looking forward to this tea time because I'm like mystery, romance, thriller, witty, wild husband. I'm just like, oh, she's my cup of tea. <laughs> I always think that when I've listened to your shows too, I'm like, I also wanted to fix up old cars. Like there's always the fun things that I, so I'm excited to be here talking about. Talking to you. Yeah. I just kind of bring in what I like, right? And people are like, Miss Liz, like you're the fancy dancy vintage girl. No, I'm not. I like to get dirty and greasy and I like to, you know, create things. But Stephanie, I want to get into who you were as a little girl and who you are now as a grown woman. Hmm. Well, I guess, uh, as a kid, I think I was a kid who found life really fascinating and just wanted to try everything. I was um, raised as an only child with really young parents in South Florida, um, but spunky and normal-ish, uh, but was always really excited about anything I read or saw and always wanted to do that. Um, then I think as a young adult, I lived a fairly fun and interesting life. Um, at least to me, I had a ton of weird jobs and life experiences that I found interesting and that I felt were important to experience at the time. And um, now I feel like that responsible and free spirited person is trying to learn to live a fairly normal family life, trying to balance that sort of adventurous nature with these piles of laundry and dishes that continuously appear every day. And so, in a nutshell. <laughs> well, Stephanie, you climbed to Mount Washington. Now you're climbing mounts of laundry, right? <laughs> Weekly, daily, but. <laughs> That's just how it works, right? When you become a mom, then you're just like, what I did 20 years ago, I cannot do now, but I can still find an adventurous way to do it, right? And that's fun awesome, right. Trying to find, trying to make it fun or interesting. I feel like for certain people, it maybe comes natural, but for some of us, it's like, how can I make, how can I find the adventure? How can I find the joy or the little trick to make this fun or to make me, to make myself do it every day? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Stephanie, we have a question here. What's the quirkiest thing you've ever done? I guess I like the word quirkiness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have no idea. Um, I probably do just quirky stuff all day long, not in like necessarily an endearing or an adorable way, but just in a, huh, like a head scratching way. Um, I was just talking to a, a good friend of mine who we hadn't seen each other in a while. And, um, just, I said, I talk to people. I talk, I'm both I'm like on that verge of either a very extroverted introvert or a very introverted extrovert. So I like a lot of alone time and I'm very good on my own, but also when I'm out, like I talk to everyone or, you know, or a lot of people, you know, I'm, and I genuinely am interested in talking to the cashier or whomever it is. Um, but I just say the strangest things. And my husband's like, what? <laughs> Who says that? I'm like, I don't know. That's so I don't think I have a an accurate gauge for for quirky. <laughs> um, so. Like we were saying before we went live, right? We kind of yeah. just let things slide out. Uh, I always get the look of did you just say that? And I'm like, what? What did I say? Like, what did I do? You know, well, like, no judgment, no judgment on you. And uh also you please just uh I cannot be responsible <laughs> well i can already tell you have a wild side and adventure side because jumping trains sailing boats and dog sled rides like come on who does that like stephanie does like stephanie i want to get into that a little bit and then i want to get into the books but i want to get into wild side inside first what got you into all of that adventure you know i i, I you know i feel like i'm 
when you read things like that, it sounds more adventurous than maybe, than maybe I feel like I am. You know, like I was just telling some friends, we were talking the other day, like, you know, Patagonia, those companies, like I'll look at those catalogs, even since, I mean, they don't come in the mail, but whenever I would see those ads, I'm like, oh my gosh, that seems so exciting. But I'm not actually sleeping on the side of a mountain in like negative 30 degree temperatures because I get cold very easily and very, very uh, wimpy with the cold. So I, I feel like I'm very adventurous and I have done a lot of things, but then I feel like compared to like real adventurers, I'm probably pretty, I pretty, probably look pretty normal and docile. But um, a lot of times I just, one, I really like to take advantage of opportunities probably that when things come up, I'm, like I said, I get excited when I was a kid and I'd read about debutantes or space camp. I'm like, oh, I want to do all of that. And so when there's an opportunity to do something that is that seems interesting, and unfortunately, I find so many things interesting, then uh, <laughs> then I need to to jump jump on it. And also, I've had obviously a lot of good opportunity, you know, wonderful opportunities in to do things. Sometimes. I like the way you said that jump on it because you jump trains. Like who does that? Yeah, I have really romanticized, I think, um, like Jack Kerouac, you know, the beatnik style. Uh, there was a period of time and I, and I remember just thinking that sounded so cool. And it was almost like I manifested randomly some like this girl in my college, she didn't go to college and she hopped trains. And I was like, I must now talk to you. Like, <laughs> how have I found this random person who has done this thing? And then eventually I knew tons of people who hopped trains. And, uh, but it was funny because I had no idea that was a thing other than, you know, in my very younger days where I was like, oh, they used to iron their hair. Let me try that. You know, just, I, you know, these weird <laughs> things. Yeah, you are my cup of tea. Uh, Stephanie, I mean, like, this is what we need, right? We need adventure. We need to think outside of the box, you know, stop being in the box. And I think that's why I put the mystery box in your video, because that's what you kind of remind me of. You, This mystery box, if you put your hand in, you never know what's coming out of it, right? I like that. I think I might, I might take that. That might make the most sense. <laughs> Did right, anyone... because you never know what's coming out of that box because you just put your hand in and there's like a bunch of adventures in there and you're just pulling, oh, yes, now we're doing this one, right? Like, you know, it just kind of adds to the, the excitement and all that. And that's what I kind of got when I did some homework on you, Stephanie, for your books, is that you kind of have this like kind of twisted, kind of like a twisted T kind of crime, mystery, romance, not too much romance, but I mean... A lot of quirkiness, a lot of wit, like sense of humor in there and that. So tell us a little bit why, what got you started in writing, first of all. Um, you know, I think probably like most writers, we say, oh, I was always doing some variation, but I think I was always just a creative person. And so I, you know, I had a career in the film industry and I was a photography, uh, sorry, a photographer and um, and uh, designer for years and years. Like I always did variations of creative work. I was, you know, an actor little when I was a kid I was always into theater and things like that and um I think I just took the really really long route to becoming a professional writer and I kept putting it off and doing other things um though I did I did really want to be in film as well like work I worked in film but so that was a good thing but I would have liked to write for film but I did not do that um so yeah I just kind of slowly made my way until I Kind of put my foot down and was like it's time to it's time to really write because i had started it probably not quite a decade before i actually did it professionally but um i don't know many many years and an entire career between the time i was like i should probably be a writer a professional writer and the time i actually did it <laughs> so so stephanie how long does it take you to write a book um it really depends uh for several years i was really outputting a lot and now it is like crickets not because not because I don't have ideas or I, if I sit down and I'm doing it it's just because I don't have as large periods of focus and um, yeah just finding I've been trying to be more balanced person and it turns out that is incredibly difficult <laughs> for someone like me who is I didn't I don't feel like I'm an all-or-nothing person but um, 
in the last, especially the last two years, really, you know, when I was thinking, I've, I've learned more, like I'm learning, I guess, more introspectively about myself as an adult and, and trying to figure out, I guess, who I'm going to continue, you know, who I'm growing into. I'm, I'm quite old, but still, you know, I thought I had it all figured out. And then I keep finding out I don't have it all figured out and there's more to learn, which is interesting. Um, but in, I've always been able to, oh, I'm going to work on this and really hyper-focus and just be in work. And when I worked in the film industry, we would work 11 to 18 hours on average. And so you're just all in, but then you have all the time off in the world. And, you know, when you become a parent and just live it and not, I mean, sure. Some other people are much more wild and adventurous in their family life. And I aspire in some ways, and I have a probably pretty wacky family life, very out of the box and unconventional compared to many people. But at the same time, you know, I still live in the same house and do a lot of the same things and trying to figure out how to, start and stop and and change hats through the day and it's not like your marketing hat and your creative hat like it is when i'm in writer land it's it's really different modes and i decided oh i'm going to really learn how to do that better and then it was like the brakes on my productivity <laughs> like oh, oh really? i don't i don't possess the skill that well i mean for a i need to really work on this and so it's kind of like the dishes thing. I'm like, okay, how do I figure out how to do this next version of life? And, uh, <laughs> still, you, you know, know, they could make dishes fun. I think we would enjoy washing them, right? Like, I I just like to give my dishes a good bubble bath. My kids always say, "Mom, like you got enough soap in there." I was like, "Well, there's a rinse." hose rinse them off but i just want to have my dishes have some fun with me like i talk to them and i make them nice and squeaky and i'm like my kids are like mom what are you doing I'm like i'm doing dishes let me have some fun so have you found some fun ways of doing dishes stephanie i feel like i spent about a year this is a couple of years back listening to other people who don't know how to do the dishes like their books and podcasts i'm like am i alone like what's wrong there's was, there was one woman like dana white or something and one of my friends is like she's like how to clean the house when you don't know how to clean a house but and like you're not you're not like dispositioned to clean the house regularly it's like me i will do every like clean everything you know i will organize the pants off of my tool closet or like anything but like not every day you know, it'll kind of go chaos and then like immaculate, but there's a lot of in between, and that works well when you live alone or, or, and it's your own mess. Um, I, I learned my one of my I have two tricks. Uh, I don't know if this will help anyone, but um, one is to well, you know, it's systems for people like me, like systems are helpful or like little tricks, but I have to clean off one side of the kitchen, so I clean off one counter. And so okay. everything gets over to the other side. There's a woman named on um, the fly lady years ago I read, then she would say, clean your kitchen sink, take everything out and polish the sink, which I love that idea, but I just do my own variation. Um, so I just put everything on the other side and then I clean that one counter and then up to the left, I'm like, okay, success. <sighs> and then I'm like, then you can turn to the mess and I'm like, okay, I got it. And then I kind of like it, that's my sort of little trigger set and then I can do it. And I also will, put my headphones in and uh, watch some something or listen to podcasts or books. And so kind of tune out and try and make it fun that way. So when you're yeah. writing, do you listen to podcasts, Stephanie, or do you have like a dead quiet area? Like how do you, when you're writing your books, like. I, uh, I do, I listen to binaural beats and stuff. It's, I, I love music and stuff, but I really can't, listen to music, it turns out. I'm wondering if like one day I'll figure out how, because a lot of people like to listen to sort of thematic music. Um, but I, I found I'm most successful when I listen to sort of like, whoa, 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 you know, like frequencies. <laughs> it's almost, but I don't like white noise. I like a pink noise is better, but you know, it's not, it's not just like, you know, it's not like static because that bothers me. Um, but there's binaural beats or sort of, uh, you know, there's frequency music and that seems to work well for me because I guess it doesn't distract me because if I hear if I hear anything with words or that I know the tune to, I will naturally sing along, sing along. I like <laughs> cannot help it. But, and so my brain is suddenly struggling like, oh, 
maybe that that's what I think the problem is. I'm like, oh, do I know this or should I be singing? Um, <laughs> Not because I'm some great singer, but just my brain wants to snap into that mode. So yeah, mostly I listen to weird focus music and sometimes it's the two headphones and sometimes I just have it on. Yeah, because we all have our way of writing, right? And when we're writing, sometimes if we're listening to a song and it has lyrics, we start to write the lyrics as we're writing. And we're like, what? what? What are we doing here? Like. You know, it just kind of it flows. It's like mood to you, right? Too, you know, it like can affect you. Yeah. So it, it's just crazy how things work all together, right? With our mind and all set. I want to get into you. Have I found three books. I know that there's fifty, but I found three. So I want to talk cool. about those three. But I want to. I'm going to get into the last book that you sent me. That's in the video. But I want to start off with Ocean Fish and Sea Sea Life. What is that about? Like, I just love the title. So that was um, a, a very random project, which, you know, you can, if you can't tell, I random would also probably be, you know, <laughs> there's the mystery box. So, but I had my son, my first child and, you know, and it was awesome, but it was a whole different, it was just, it's a whole different uh, mode and, and you're not productive in you know, the same way, yet you're doing something literally 24 hours a day. And we would read, these books that were like truck books and it would just be pages and pages of trucks. Cause that just happened to be things. I don't know. Somehow people bought us and I'm like truck. And I had been a, at that point I had been a professional photographer for over eight years prior to that. And I still was when he was born and I specialized in architectural photography and underwater portraits. So people underwater. Um, and then a very good friend of mine, he's, still a an incredible underwater uh, under, underwater photographer Jason Arnold and um, his wife is also one of my best friends and she and I were both doing books I don't know and we both had babies and all this stuff and I said well we should just make a fish book <laughs> because we live in you know we're very we live by the beach we're very watery people and between Jason and I we have a lot of water <laughs> photography in us it's like oh that would be easy enough and so Next thing I know, um, I made or started working on this fish book and it was just fun. It was the first book book I made and having to making books now is much different because I had to use InDesign. I use I'm very I used to use Photoshop and Illustrator and those things for years and years, but I'd never used InDesign. And it was it was a Herculean task trying to learn that program. Thankfully, fiction books do not have to be created in InDesign. Um, I'm much better, but I would cry. And uh, so it was really just fun. And then I would go do readings because people always wanted me to go do readings and stuff. And then I realized that you had to really market it to like the fisher fishing community, fisher folk. And a lot of my friends down here are, are big into fishing, but I am not. And I realized, ah, I'm just going to let that book live its life. And <laughs> it's out there. I, when I, when I heard the title, I was like, did she write a fish book? Like, this is the girl who's doing romance and mystery and she's got a fish book out there. I'm like, I got to talk to her about the fish book. <laughs> you know, it was so flippant. I was like, Oh, I got to put a title. And I was like, Oh wow. Fish book. Or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's fun. Sometimes that those are the most fun things to. Well, and you kind of just let the fish swim down the river, <laughs> you know, wherever this book is going, this is where it's going. Sometimes you have to, you know, realize, uh, what your your avenue or your lane is not by by giving it a whirl <laughs> right the hook has gone the other way i free I, from i just love the title of it like i mean it was really and, and then their next one is headlines deadlines and lies i kind of like that one i like the title so i'm like this is going to be intriguing this one i uh well i'm glad thank you um i i sometimes Think I should go back and change that one because it was such it was one it was a crossover book from my sort of sweet small town romances into mystery and it's a lot to do with genealogy um, but kind of in a in a quirky small town uh, fun upbeat way and when I did the title and the cover I, I sometimes think oh I feel like the cover and the title are sort of for the books I was going to go on to write and th this one's a little like 
it's a little it's almost like a hallmark mystery because there but there's no oh. murder or crime and stuff but in like the light the very light hearted way so it's fun and it's very sweet but um it is it's not a heavy one and sometimes i'm like oh i the title may be misleading because yeah because when i when i read the title i was like oh that one's gonna be intriguing that one's gonna really get you in there you know it's just the headlines and the deadlines like you know you got like a bunch of stuff you know somebody's gonna be out there like it's it leaves you guessing for more so you know i'm gonna have to get the book to see how quirky it is and Small Maybe I'm just going to write titles. Maybe I should just write book titles for people. Right? That could be. You, you know, book titles sometimes lead to a nice, beautiful song and sometimes a, a poem or, you know, a different avenue, you know, baby's names. You just never know, right? True. I, I think it would be cool to have a kid's name, to, you know, headlines, deadlines, and lies. I think. <laughs> What's your name? Yeah. Headlines, deadlines, <laughs> You just never know these days, right? What people are calling their kids. So now I want to get into the sunshine state and crime. Oh, sunshine state of crime. Yes. The yeah. When you sent me that one, I was like, oh, this is completely different than those other two books that I found. Well, definitely the fish book. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're taking us on a crime adventure, are you? Trying. Yeah. Trying. <laughs> I do try. This is the the Sunshine State of Crime, which is it's been this really roundabout. It was sort of this planned series for a really long time, and then I kept doing everything else because I have sort of pre-established pen names in romance, and I would always end up being like, "No, I'm going to focus on mystery because that's what I'm the most excited about, and that I always plan to write." And then, oh, but I have a pre-order deadline from before that I have to deal with or, or get to and fix something. And so um, in my head, I have so many books in the, what I'd call the sunshine crime um, series started. I mean, and literally started and planned out. Um, but finally, finally book one that has been sitting there in waiting forever. I realized it was on pre-order for this. I think, I think it's beginning of March and I was going to, I was like, Oh no, <laughs> I guess it's time. I better get on it. Um, it's, it's time to get it out into the world. So it, but it is, it's really, it's fun for me. It is more what I've been planning to do for a long time, but I, I tend to put off the thing that I'm planning to do and do other things a lot of times. So hopefully it's fun. Hopefully everyone enjoys it. Hopefully it's an adventure. And uh, so yeah. Stephanie, in your bio, it says that you've written over 50 books. So are all 50 books online for people to get? Like. They are, but not under my name and, uh, oh. and do not go searching for them. And, and that is, you know, those are varying lengths. Like I used to write really, I wrote shorter things and I have some short, short stories. Uh, most of them are, are novel length, but you know, that there are shorter and longer novels. I tend to be a bit verbose. If you can't tell, <laughs> I'm working on brevity. That's another thing. Dishes and brevity. But, um, so I, I don't tend to be the shortest writer, but I've written all different lengths. So, you know, that can add up over time. But yeah, those are all online. They have their own lives and sort of like the fish hook. Some of them I've been working on letting go, not because I haven't loved them, but because I wanted to eventually get to where I wanted to be, where I, which was doing more of what I'm trying to do now. Well, I think it's important to put that out there, right? The adventures and journey of writing as well. Because when you first start writing, you're like, okay, I'm going to do it this way. And then as the years progress, you're like, ah, oh, I don't feel good there anymore. I'm going to go this way, right? You're going to take that other sw swim down the lake. You're going to leave the fish over here and you're going to go for the shark, right? You're going to just go for the big bite. Yeah. You know, and we have to do that sometimes. And I can see that in the titles of the three books that I found, you know, I'm just like, they're all different and they all have like a different way of looking at it like you just read the titles and you're like okay that's romance okay that's crime oh that's mystery you know what i mean and the fish book well that just threw me right off i was just like i gotta ask her about the fish book it's a warm up right <laughs> right and but that's like when you go fishing right you start off with the little minnow and then you get the bigger ones and so you know what you're doing right that's actually really good with i mean that was probably getting my feet wet without realizing it in a very i mean actually that's been 
in more ways than I guess I realized um, because I never, I forget about the fish book sometimes, but that was really dipping my toes in, you know, it really was a tiny minnow because I had no attachment and it was just fun, but I already knew I wanted to write books and I already knew that that was what I was supposed to do. And I had done versions of that. I just hadn't started doing it professionally, but that was the first, okay, now you can do this, but you can put it online yourself, which previously you, you weren't able to do that for many, many years. And, you know, most writers know that there's, you know, it used to be a much different process. Self-publishing was different, hybrid publishing, all that stuff. And when I first started way back before I actually started, you know, uh, two careers ago, that was pretty daunting, not because I feared rejection, but because I needed to support myself as an adult. And, you know, you can't live off of a hundred dollars every couple months from something you sell. And I was, did not know how that was going to work way back then. But now it's a very different world. It's amazing in so many ways um, as far as what you can do. But I think the fish book was sort of my first, oh, how does this work? And then doing the pen names for all those years and doing romance was also for me a, a learning curve that I knew I needed to to go on, I, you don't go on the curve, but you know what I mean. Uh, well, you never I, know, right? There's a lot of excitement on the curve. <laughs> but that's for another show. <laughs> there we go. Miss Liz just let it slip, but you know, I like if we can roll. If we can roll together, it's good. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's, that's kind of person. Just never know what curve we'll land on. <laughs> And so that's where I, you know, and actually even after all these years, I thought, oh, doing romance and doing it with so much anonymity, I said, I know everything now, not everything, but I was like, I know so much and I'm so brave now. Um, I know what sells. I know not to be afraid. And I would tell people all the time because I love encouraging others. Like I am sort of the biggest cheerleader for everyone else. Like if you had the most bizarre out of the box dream no matter if it was like, I want to knit or I want to, you know, knit the world's largest building cover, whatever, I would be like, yes, there is a way. And I am incredibly good at strategy. And I'd be like, let's sit down and figure that out. And so generally speaking, I really, really believe in, in everyone in this very, I don't know, I want to say like honest way, but like really, that's just how, I don't know, my husband's very different. So he doesn't always feel that way. And so he sometimes questions, you know, questions things, but that's just a real driving force when I get really excited. Um, but with myself, I do believe that I do believe those same things, but I've come to realize to a lesser degree, because I believe so much in everyone else, but you know, we're always so self-critical in, even if we're confident, even if we're productive people, but we always, tend to second guess ourselves or put our own things to the side. There's so many things that we do, these little tricks that we don't realize how we treat ourselves differently than we do the world. And even um, a couple of years ago when I had first decided, okay, it's time I'm going to start publishing under my name and I'm going to start doing the books that I was excited to do in the beginning that I got into this to start doing. I thought I know everything I've gotten past all <laughs> any of this, any of the issues, any of the ego that may have been, may have stood in my way, the creative person, I know how to do it all. And it combined with the, the whole parenting life um, balance, all that stuff. I have realized like, I have a whole lot to learn there. Like it became much harder, you know, suddenly it's, it was my face and my name. And uh, so I kind of just going back, circling back to sort of like the fish book with the minnows and then like this in between where I thought I was, you know, I'm a big fish now. And then I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to get eaten. <laughs> but so I need to learn to, I kind of need to stay in this, you know, at this, uh, this little area. You can tell I don't fish very much, but I mean, at all. <laughs> but like, what do you mean the middle area is? Uh, and relearn. I need to relearn in this different way. Uh, now and so i'm doing that <laughs> but it's a little well, i think it's really important too stephanie what you're doing because you're going in different avenues in different areas right so you're giving yourself a test oh okay this is this works this doesn't work this is just my feet in the sand 
I'm going to give you a little bit more in the next one. You know, building up. It's like climbing that mountain that you climbed in Washington. Like, you know, you had to climb the steps. You had to get to the top. But you had to try it in different ways. And I really like that you went all over the place. Because I like that. Because it gets pretty boring when you're on the same road, riding the same ride all the time in life. You know what I mean? You got to take a little. Oh, we're going this way. Oh, we're going that way. You know, you find these little hidden gems within yourself. And you say, oh, you know what? I really want to try this. I really want to give this a try. And I, and that's what I got when your bio was sent to me. I was like, oh, she's a trier. She likes to try stuff. Yeah. And I like that because we're so scared of trying stuff in today's world. And as a writer, you get to try that because you put it into your stories. You know, into the, into the, into the words that you put in the books. And I think that's what I like about reading books is it takes you on a different journey, right? It takes you in that mystery box. You're like, oh, is she going here? Is she going there? Is she kissing him? Is she kissing? You know, like, you know, romance mystery can be all different levels. It doesn't have to be all lovey-dovey holding hands. And, you know, romance could be a little sneaky, a little sassy. You know, there's a, there's different types of romance. And when... When we talked before we came live, you said that you were more on the crime side and the mystery and, you know, getting you into the story. And that mystery box that I put in your video kind of just, it's like that, you know, that black eight that you shake. Yeah, the magic you ask eight. the questions. Yeah, the magic, eight, magic ball. And you just kind of get the answers, right? Yes, no, maybe, you know. I get a lot of right, things. left. <laughs> That's what I see with try. you. <laughs> yes, no, give it a try. See how it turns out. Right. Well, you went from jumping trains to dog sleds to sailing to, you know, you have that adventurous side to you. And I'm sure that that shows in your writing as well, how deep you can get because you've done these things. Now, somebody who wouldn't have done these adventurous things probably wouldn't have been able to get so deep into the story. Yeah. And, you know, actually, when you were saying, you know, being a trier and a reader, that's as you're saying it, I'm like, you know, that is, I think, why we read as well, because a lot of times we can't try things either. We can't because we're physically constrained against being able to try all the things we dreamed of trying, you know, by our lives or jobs or, you know, physical things or bravery. Just, you know, there's so many reasons and also time. You know, we just can't all do all the things and access to access to things. And that's one of the amazing things about reading. I think that in watching movies and things like that, we get to experience and try things that we otherwise wouldn't. And yeah, it probably helps too when there's, there's something in it, you know, if the creator has, can offer us some version of, of understanding a reality that's a little deeper than they could Google. But I do think that that, that we all kind of crave our own version of of trying even, even as, you know, even passively. Yeah. I want to Google your T. So I'm going to give you the letters T E A. We're going to, we're going to twist it up this tonight. I'm going to Google Stephanie's T and see what Stephanie's going to give us. So what kind of flow are we getting from you tonight, Stephanie? Oh man. Google my tea. I wish we had the magic eight ball. Um, I am. <laughs> No, I, we I can shake it. I, I I I promise, guys. I will buy a magic eight ball. <laughs> Holidays are coming up. Now I know what to send you. you know, I I always have the hardest time um, giving one word answers or favorites. Uh, for some reason, I I don't tend to have like a one thing because I'm a trier. I guess <laughs> I like a lot. Well, of then things. try and give me I a big tea. Um, Just so spill it. Spill I'm it. gonna go with, uh, and it's. And it's weird. You had said something once about that. It just has to resonate with you. So I think the words are not exact. Yeah, I don't think that. Yeah. So don't take them at face value, but I'll go with truth, enthusiasm and adventure. And, you know, I wanted to say something or I was thinking like learning because I'm always learning. I'm always inputting and learning. Um, so but that that letter didn't work. So and then I was like teaching, teaching. But truth, I really I really seek truth. Like I love honest conversations with people. I love learning, you know, the reason I, I think I've always enjoyed adventures and doing and doing things and trying things is because I love learning 
about things and the truth behind them, seeing people's lives. Like I might not be a mountain climber, but I might love going into that and seeing what that world is and experiencing it. Maybe it's for me, maybe it's not, but it doesn't matter. I still got to experience something really organically or in a way, in a, a tr somewhat truthful way, you know, meeting people who love a thing. I love passionate people or, you know, excited people. Um, so truth in that I, I truly love people and life and, and getting to experience it. However, that is, whether that's through a conversation and being overly candid and honest. And like I tend to be, you know, I will tell way too many things, but I feel like that over truthfulness, like that comes out of me, it's like, and I hope when I get it from other people, that's how we learn by sharing and, you know, the sort of the global village, you know, we only, we can learn by sharing experiences. And so I really, I like trying to be honest and overly so probably. And then I also like getting that from people. So there's my tea. See, and I like the tea because you Googled the tea for what was within you. See, you told me that it was your tea, Stephanie, by just saying that you're a truth seeker. You know, you're seeking truth within everyone that you meet, everyone that you work with, everyone that's in your life. You, 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 you're that person that says, "Give me the truth, no matter how hard it is. I'd rather that than a lie." Right? Percent. Yeah. Yeah. You and I, and I and I get that from you because when we seek truth, we give truth. When we don't seek truth, we seek lies. You know, we, we seek the easy, oh, it's okay, it's comfortable, I forgive you kind of things. Where truth seekers are like, hey, give it to me hard, and that's the way I want it, and I, I'll, I'll deal with it after, but give it to me, you know? I've always said, I said, you know, I I will never judge anyone, and it, it's incredibly hard. Like, you pretty much can't offend me. I mean, I'm sure I've been hurt before. Of course, we're all human. But I said, you can, anyone, like, tell me anything, tell me the truth. I and mean, you don't have to be mean about it. You know, I'm a very optimistic person, but tell me what you want. It might hurt me. I might say, it, you know, say it was a relationship, but I, I can accept anything as long as you are telling me, because I want you to be happy as much as I want me to be happy. And those might be different and that's yeah. okay. But I will, I will truly champion your happiness. I don't, I would never be happy if somebody else was unhappy in order to make me happy. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where I, I feel like people sometimes forget and they, they feel like they need to be not dishonest, but, you know, um, soften things or, or not tell truth because that would make the other person happy. And that doesn't mean a romantic person, but you know, the person they're talking to, but when it's someone you're really talking to about anything from giving advice to a relationship or a friendship, you know, give me the real things. Cause we can't get you to where you need to be. If you're pretending that you're someone you're not, or giving me information that you think I want to hear, I can handle anything. I would never want to be in a relationship with someone who was pretending to love me because there's someone else out there you could love or, you know, and I would be happier by myself or with someone else than, I don't need that facade, but I, you can tell me anything. And, but that's what I wish we all could um, appreciate in each other and, and help each other to do because of, because of exactly what you said. But that see, and this is why I do, why I ask you guys to give me your teas because your words actually tell me who you are as an individual. It actually tells me how you write, how you, how you do your life you know, how the passion, the purpose, because if you're giving me a word that just says, Oh, I don't know, uh, trauma, but you don't tell me what your trauma is. Well, where is your trauma? Wh what are you really hiding? What are you really not sharing with me? You know, where you've given me those words and you're proud of them and you've, and your body language tells me too, because it tells me a lot when we give words, right? It's like when we tell our children, Give me the words that are hurting you so I can help you, you know? And sometimes kids will tell us the hard truth. And we as moms are like, oh, that was a little hard. Could you not have softened that up a little? But that's what it is, right? And our children are the ones that are guiding us and saying, you know what? Give us the truth, you know? Show us the truth. 
Show us the example. Be the example. You're an example to your children because you've written, written stories. So you're giving them that guideline of saying, you know, what if you want to be a writer in the future? Go for it. You know, go, if you want to write the quirkiest book, go for it. Because you're that mama cheerleader that's just saying, hey, let's do it. And by you giving me that T of truth, um, what's, what's your second word? Oh, um, I went with enthusiasm. Yes. And, and then adventure. That actually tells me who you are as an individual. And anybody that reads your Bible, uh, your, your Bible, anybody that reads your bio will say, that is Stephanie. Stephanie is serving the truth. Stephanie is serving herself. And that's what we have to do as individuals, right? When we want to serve ourselves and we want people to buy our material and our products is we have to be truthful. You know, we have to say, you know what? I gave you the little fish. It was a minnow. I, I'm, I, I don't care where it swims right now because I, that was just a testing book. You know, I test the waters. And then you went into the headlines and deadlines. And that's where I was like, okay, I'm kind of, I'm into this book. Now I want to read this one, you know? Because you gave those different, different adventures. So you got this audience over here. You got the fishers. Then you got the, <laughs> then you got the crime and you got the lovers and the, you know, intrigue people. And then you jumped into the crime and mystery. So you, you jumped into all the different pots and said, if you don't like this book, you'll like this one. If you don't like this one, you got this one, you know, and that's and what so life enjoying. is all about. Yeah. Yeah. That is what life is all about. And, you know, well, just just to add to that, sometimes I get really excited and I jump into a conversation. So I try. I always try, especially on recorded things, not to um, cut people off because I. That's where the enthusiasm comes from. The no, and and we need that, right? I'm like that too, and I'm just like you know what? Sometimes I get so excited with my guests, I'm just like, guys, I'm here too, but I want to get in here because you guys make me so excited because I love real raw guests. I love when my guests are open and raw. And that's who you are, Stephanie. So I want to thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no. And, you know, well, now I'm even going to jump back two steps. But, you know, that what, what you're saying about words. And, and that's one of the things, like when I said, I find it hard to sometimes choose one word descriptions. And you were saying, you know, say you wrote trauma. Um, even when I was thinking of these, sometimes I worry because if you can't at I worry that just saying, you know, truth, enthusiasm, adventure, for example, like that picture, that paints a picture where it's the really bold, living out loud, robust part of my personality. And that exists, but it's not all of it. And so, you know, in a format like this, it's nice. And I know, and you do a really good job, but you do a really good job. So that's why your show is so good. And in these sort of honors conversations where you, as you were saying, you know, you get more from it because a lot of times people really like to just, no, I'm not, I'm not saying people, some people will just give you that one word and you're like, wait, is there really anything under it? And sometimes I feel like there's always, I love people. So I'm never, I was never talking badly, but you know, some people will use a thing as a mask and they're like, oh, I think that this is, this defines me and I'll use this, but it doesn't really have me. It's maybe not what they are as much as a label. And that's really an easy thing for them to use. But I like when you can find out when you have time to kind of explain, because it's so hard to explain yourself yeah. and encapsulate. Oh, well, I mean, enthusiasm, but that doesn't mean, um, you know, I'm, I'm loud and, and robust all the time. I spend a ton of time, you know, thinking about these things or working on, you know, this other part of my personality or being quiet, you know, and quietly enthusiastic or, or having, you know, low moments and, you know, struggling and all of those things and talking through it. And so, I don't know, it's, it is interesting. It's hard to use those words, but I do think like what you were saying is it's really interesting if you can get beyond just the, or find out what people mean yeah. by the word. Use. Well, and like you said, the T E A is they are hard words to come by because there's two vowels and a, and a consonant, right? Mm -hmm. And these are letters that are not often used to express feelings and emotions. And there's a reason why T is the past, the present, and the future is because it's supposed to make the time travel of life. You know, it's a flow. It's when you prepare the tea, when you put the water, you put the tea bag in, you take the tea bag out, you put the sugar, you put the cream, you put butter, you put whatever you want, cinnamon, honey, anything you want in that tea. That's what you're serving. 
And Stephanie, I was really looking forward to this tea time because I seen the different pots that you went into when you were writing these three books and you have 50 of them out there. So just imagine, I only got the three books here. So imagine the other 47 books where they took you, right? They probably took you to the under the rainbow and the magical land. Like we don't know where they went because there's so many of them out there, right? So romance. <laughs> You know, and romance, when people hear romance, they think of just lovers. There's but there's so, so many much. different levels of romance out there, right? Uh, card and spice to somebody. <laughs> you it you know, you just never know what you're putting in your tea. Like, you know, we, we have to do these things. We have to put different flavors and blends out there so we can have some adventure. And you gave me the word adventure. And that tells me a lot because... Your bio tells me that you were adventurous. Like, you know, whether you, for you, it was a small adventure, but if somebody reading that bio says, whoa, she did this. She climbed a mountain. She did dog sled. She jumped trains. You know, she sailed, sailed, the, sailed the sea. Like, you know, these are adventures. These are what you hear in movies. But Stephanie, you did them, you know? It's, so never downsize your adventures because your adventures. Now I'm going to do something a little different with Stephanie. We're almost at the end here, but I'm going to do something different with Stephanie tonight. Stephanie, I want to twist your tea. Okay. So I want you to give me the softer side of Stephanie, but not using the TEA. Give me the words that you would have used had it not been the TEA. Okay. Um, this is not words and maybe I'll think of the words, but um, I'm on the spot. So, so this is actually, this was tea. This was hot water. And so earlier today, uh, I drank my, I like to make a special beverage during the, the day, usually just like sort of a hot beverage. And when I'm working, I like to have something there. And today it was the coffee I did not finish drinking yesterday with chai put in it. And it was in it. And then a bunch of, you know, cinnamon and pumpkin pie spice and fresh nutmeg, just a bunch of stuff mixed together. It tasted okay, but I, it's, it was a lot. Uh, and I sort of pounded that a little bit before this, not right before, but you know, towards the end of the day, like, oh, I'm going to drink this weird special drink that I make something like that almost every day. But then I was going to make tea, like warm tea to have this podcast. And I boiled the water and I have hot water. And I have found that sometimes I like to just drink hot, plain hot water. It's like tea without the flavor. And it's sort of, I feel like that in a way tends to be the two sides of me. Like it's not, sometimes people will be like all or nothing. Like I could, I would just like to relax all the time or I want to work, you know, hours and hours. I like that. I'm good at that. Um, I tend to either like thrift store clothes or I'll find the most expensive thing. I'm like, oh, that one's nice. Oh, yes, that is the most expensive outfit at the store or like the store that has the most expensive. Or, you know, when I was a kid, it was like, or I should say in my uh, 20s, my mom made fun of me. She's like, why are you, this is 50 cents a pound. I used to go to this place that was 50 cents a pound in Boston or like the $500, you know, uh, Ann Taylor suit, which made no sense. One was old man golf pants and one was like a fine designer suit. Um, and I feel like that's sort of, I guess the bold and softer side, you know, part of it is I love talking and being out and having exciting, uh, eclectic conversations and being really physical and, and alive. And I also really like to just be quiet and by myself or I mean, I like people, you know, I can be by myself with somebody else too, but I could spend countless hours, days, months by myself, reading with a computer, listening. I input, I intake a lot of information. So maybe it's that too. I output a lot when I'm talking and, and talking and being with people, but the rest of the time I input a lot. You know, I listen to a lot of nonfiction actually to reference books. I'm always learning. And so I don't know if that describes, but that feels somewhat um, exemplary of maybe my two sides. And I, I love that you did that, Stephanie, that you put no flavor in that hot water because that's how life is sometimes, right? We have so much sweetness and so much bitterness and so much stale. 
that sometimes we just don't need any flavors. We don't need anything except for just plain, simple, no flavor. Let's just carry on with the day. You know what I mean? Just get through the day. You know, uh, it's really, really incredible what you just did with the water. I like it. I love it. Like, you know, tea without the flavor. Sometimes no, you just no don't need the flavor. Like, it, it, it truly is. You know, sometimes we have to have a different perspective. And we have to have somebody that opens our eyes to say, you know what? Sometimes we don't need the flavor. We just need a simple glass of water. Just doing the first step is is more than enough. I boiled it and put it in a cup. You know, if we do that, maybe. <laughs> and we have a comment here. You can't be a writer without being a reader. And I truly believe that as well. You know, you have to be able to have that open mindset of reading and understanding uh, in order to write. Uh, Stephanie, any final words before we wrap up? How can people find you? Where can they get these incredible books? You know, uh, I found the three of them. I don't know about the other ones, but if you'd like to share that with everybody out there. Um, Amazon, you know, my my website, of course, Stephanie Levine or Steph Levine, they both go to the same place. Uh, Amazon, BookBub, only those places. If you're bookish, you can just put me in and I either have blonde hair or brown hair or pink hair. You'll eventually, you'll see me. But it has been really, really nice getting to just hang out and talk with you. So it's fun well, to have a similar spirit to banter with. Well, thank you so much. Before we wrap up, we got a couple minutes left here. I want to get into your favorite color is aqua. And I see the back here. There's a little bit of aqua here. So how come aqua? Well, because it sounded like you wanted one word answers because the way the format was. And so I had to <laughs> You know, what? one words actually take you on a journey, right? They take you on an adventure because you gave me the word adventure and look at the adventure we took. We, we, we gave you a tea with flavor and a tea with no, no flavor. <laughs> yeah, um, I really struggle. The closest I've ever come to a favorite, and it makes no sense, but when I was a kid, they always ask you things like, where, what would you bring to a, an, an island? I guess when I was a kid, we were always going to be stranded on a desert island somewhere. And I never, I mean, I knew supplies, but... Somehow I'd only, I, the only thing I've ever come to is if I had to be stranded on a desert island with only two ice cream flavors, I know what those are. And besides that, I've never had like a definitive on anything. And it's mint chocolate chip in Rocky Road, in case anyone was wondering, because I feel like you get the perfect combination of chocolatey and refreshing, but still not lacking the chocolate and the nut. Anyways, think about it. It's a weird combo, but it weirdly works together. You don't have to eat them in the same bite, but just. Just let that percolate if anyone cares about ice cream and combinations and they're on a desert island. But um, color, yeah, I like, I tend to like a lot of blues. So I have a lot of blues. I, I would say my favorite color was probably like fuchsia, magenta. But then I think those, I end up doing both of those colors. So it's sort of like a ton of blue and the sort of hot pinkish. Um, and then rainbow. I think I really just like a rainbow of colors. And I, I had all of that. And then I brought it down to aqua for your form. <laughs> well, I love that you brought it down to aqua. We it's have right. a quick question here. Uh, I'm going to get it out before we wrap up. So quick question. Do you agree it's in the it's the general opinion of historians that the six most important words in the English language are why didn't I think of that? Or do you agree or disagree? Is that a question? Can that be a question for you while I think on it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know what? I, I, it depends on the situation and the story that is being told. It, do I agree or do, why didn't I think of that? You know, I say that a lot of times. Why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I do that? You know, I think I, I would have to agree. I think I'd have to agree. I don't, and I'm going to go with, I don't know that it's the most, the six most important words, but I think it is six very fun words for people who like to, who think of a lot of things for, or maybe for people who, maybe on the opposite, because I tend to be, I have too many ideas and I surround myself with people who also have a ton of ideas. So we can never have enough ideas. And whenever we learn of something that we haven't thought of, we're like, whoa, that's just mind blowing and, and beyond exciting. Like, why didn't I think of that? Um, but then maybe if you are on the end of other end of the spectrum and you tend to lack ideas, then maybe that's also really beneficial. But it is definitely a human sentiment, if nothing else, a, a very, <laughs> very omnipresent human sentiment that I think we all can relate to. 
And we got one more here. Uh, do you find your writing was authentic from day one or did you get more authentic as you kept writing and learning more? Oh, thank you. That's not, I'll, I guess that that one's for me, but I, I like that question. Actually, I think I am still continuing to learn. I think I have, an, I've always had an authentic writing voice and a spe somewhat specific writing voice. I can write different ways, but I, I do have my own sort of authentic voice. However, I now go back and read things and realize that I, over time I've learned more or I'm continuing to learn more refinement. So I used to have, I had a, a, an innate way of just sort of, I can really sort of empathetically almost get into head spaces of each of the characters and write from those perspectives. But now as I've gotten older, the more I go through it, you realize, okay, now you got to cut a lot of that out. So I'm still, I'm still continuing to find my voice. And then every time you switch genres, you kind maybe not everyone, but I have found you are a tiny baby and you are starting again and, uh, and, and starting to refine and re, re hone a brand new voice, which you totally thought you had down pat. So, and from Steven again, we have, and follow up on what about vulnerability? How would you take that? Um, I, well, if, Liz, if you have clarification, but I'll just try and quickly say what I guess I would take from vulnerability. Um, like I was kind of alluding to earlier, it's been an up and down where I said, oh, I'll be, when I first got into writing, I said, I'm going to be way too vulnerable um, I, as a creative person. And I, but I know that everyone's talented. Like I can write a book and I need to focus on the marketing. And then I spent all these years doing that with the anonymity of the pen names. And then I thought, oh, I'm not vulnerable to the criticism or to my subconscious or ego, like working against me, any of those things anymore. And then I found out I was wrong <laughs> as I started trying to, I mean, I have continued forward just much slower. You know, I just started realizing you do become vulnerable again when you sort of shift spaces. Not always, but you know, it's it's constantly. I I would have to. It's almost like the little angel devils. But I've I've found that I will have my rational mind, and then this sort of little little writer's creative ego that's like, oh no, it's not perfect. It's you have to go back and write that again seven hundred times or edit it. And my logistical brain is like, you have done this a million times. Like, no, put that out. It is fine. And then the other ones over there being like, but I don't think so. And so it is a real struggle, <laughs> like even no matter how far along you get. And he's a great answer. Thanks. So Stephanie, I really want to thank you for joining me tonight on Tea Time. I had a blast. Like I love when I have guests that are real raw and, you know, quirky and sense of humor. It makes it a lot more fun to just sit and have some time together. So if anybody would like to know more about Tea Time, check out Miss Liz's website, www.misslizesteatimes.com to check out on Stephanie. Stephanie, I'll get you to say your website out loud and spell it for the audio listeners out there so they can check you out as well. Well, I am very sorry for the long French last name, but it is Stephanie Levine, or let's just go with stephlevine.com, which is S-T-E-P-H-L-A-V as in Victor, I-G as in George, N-E. Levine, like Avril Levine, but slightly different. <laughs> but me, but me instead. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I had a uh, pleasure. I had the most pleasure tonight sitting and just just being silly, you know, and being open and talking about some incredible books out there. You know, if you're into different genres, Stephanie has all different genres to check out. So check her out. Check out her website. Uh, we will be back next week. Next week will be the final week, and then we hit the reunion tea time where we have 14 different countries coming, and we have over 85 guests from season one, two, three, and four that will be joining Miss Liz. So we have some surprises. We have some entertainment. We have all of that good stuff going on. So you'll want to check that out. That is a free event that will be hosted on my YouTube channel on December 21st from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you'll want to check that out. And again... I want to thank you so much, Stephanie. This was a blast. You know, you. it is so much fun having guests like you on my platform. I want to thank all the viewers and listeners out there, everyone that 
gave a question, comments, and all of that. I seen them all, and I want to thank you for all your support because without all of you guys, I could not do what I'm doing. And we have three tea times left, and then we're closing it up for another season, and then we start season five all over again. So this is how we roll. We serve TEA in this house. We serve a different type of tea. So I'll see everybody next week, same time, same place, with three new TEAs for all of you guys to enjoy.